Yeah, we got some prayer requests that we need to be praying for. Uh, Kay Cassidy, she needs heat and some other things. And we just found out that uh, Brother David Taylor's wife had a stroke. We need to be praying for that family. Um, and y'all have a very blessed day. Um, we love everybody, but always remember that Jesus loves you more. And always pray for us, and we'll be praying for you and be a blessing to everyone out there. Pray for them, talk to them, and pray that everyone gets to know Jesus. Love everybody, and God bless. Amen and amen. God is good all the time. Amen all the time. Uh, what do we got running? Nothing. I Nothing. can hear something running in his headphones or something. Well, ain't nothing running. Mm. Huh. Mm-hmm. Might hear static or something. No. I hear something. Yeah, I can what hear, is it? I can hear something coming through the mic. But anyway, uh, good to see uh, Shirley in the in the chat room and Chandra Sloan in the chat room. Uh, amen. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna turn into Bible study tonight. I'm your host, Evangelist Chris Chain. We're saving America one soul at a time. Amen. And we're gonna kick into Bible study. Amen. Who'd like to lead us in a word of prayer before we get started? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day that you've made today, Father. Lord, we just ask you, Lord, just to open up the windows of heaven tonight, Father, in this Bible study, Father. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Alright guys, I think we're going to start off in Mark chapter 12, around verse 28. That's Mark, and of course I'm in the King James Version, amen, uh, of Mark chapter 12, starting at verse 28. When y'all get there, whoever would like to read that, read that, please. And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, The first of all commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Verse 30 and 31, too. Okay. Oh, okay. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Amen. Amen. Now, in verse 30. What's it tell? It says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. This is the first commandment. Now, how many people we think lacking on that first commandment? A lot. You can't kill them on your hands and toes. I don't like how this these headphones sound. They're different. Headphones don't like them. But how many people we think, you know, is not in that in that first commandment right there? Listen, today we're going to be tra- talking about a true walk with God. A true walk with God. Now, what's the first thing we got to do to be able to have a true walk with God? Be born again. Hey Amen. You got to be born again, but you got to love the Lord. With, God, all, with, all with heart, everything. With all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. For this is the first commandment. Amen? 
And uh, good to see Bobby in the chat room. He's in there. Hey, Bobby. Amen. Love uh, you, Bobby. But we're talking about a true walk with God, all right? So, so let's say, to get a true walk with God, we will never experience all that God has for us until we totally surrender and love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We will never fully know our Lord until we have a true walk with God. So, you know, getting on to that, that true walk with God, that true walk with God, we know that we must love Him. We must love Him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Amen? Amen. But a true walk with God, Miss Vicky, is what? A true walk with God? Uh. What would you say a true walk with God is? Walking in the Spirit is a true walk with God. you got to walk by faith. you got to listen to what God says, not what anybody else says. Amen. And you got to walk it, talk it, and live it. In other words. Amen, amen. Anybody else? got to sell out. you got to sell out. Not for sale. You got to sell out, huh? A true walk with God, it is definitely a lifestyle, is it not? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's more than just going to a building and worshiping God, which we're going to get into a little bit deeper here in this conversation about worshiping God. But a true walk with God is for sure a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. And it's a life of love, of praise, of reverence, devotion, obedience, thankfulness, honor, sacrifice, prayer, confession. The list goes on, don't it? Yeah. That sounds like a pretty hard life, don't it? That sounds like a pretty hard life. But a true walk with God requires humility, humbleness, long suffering. Amen. Long suffering. Well, that long suffering means a lot. Well, let's, let's say this. Can you have a true walk with God and still be swelled up with man's pride? No. No. Or do you got to become as humble as a child? God, humble as a child. child. Now, how many people do we think still trying to still trying to serve God and still keep their pride too? A lot. Yeah, but now you can be, you can still be humble in a sense, and still not be walking the right walk you're supposed to be walking. Right. Well, of course so, of course so. But we're talking about a true walk with God, not just dibby dabbling, not just being lukewarm. We're talking about a true walk with God. What's the things that we must do to have that true walk with God? Mine is to honor and obey God. That's, I mean, we have to. Well, a true walk, what, you, you've got to for? do it all the way. All the time. You all can't just do it when it suits you. Right. Or when, say, well, you know, I'll help this person uh, after I get everything I want. Well, or you know, I'll do this whenever well, well, I get what I want. Well, well, when we go back into that, we go back to that, you know, prophet that uh, there was all kinds of sick people in in, in that place, you know, and uh, only one or two got healed. God right. didn't send them to everybody. Huh. True. Huh. Because the ones that were that believed is the ones that got healed and had the faith. And we were right. talking about this earlier. That lame man laying at the gate. You know that Peter and them reached down and. And he got healed. How many how many men of God do you think walked by him that actually didn't heal him? He didn't get healed. Yeah. Probably a lot. Probably a lot. He laid there at the gate every day, didn't he? Just like a lot of people today. Well, that's like the one that was at the pool. If you, you know, a lot of people today passes people up on the side of the road, too. You know, and that could be Jesus Christ standing there. Hey, Amen. Well, could I mean, be. that's just like somebody that's lost and not saved. 25 evangelists, preachers, teachers, whatever, may go to this person 
and they may never take heed to what none of them says, and then just one, just one, yeah. comes by, and that's the one that's supposed to do, be there. Huh? Well, now, got... now, now, now. With that being in mind, can we say all the rest of them is wrong because they didn't do it? Well, no, no. Yeah, it, it just he wasn't, wasn't there. The or he wasn't carrying the water. You know, you gotta before you can have a garden, you gotta plant a seed. There's everyone has their number of people that they win. Right. Well, let's let's go to First Peter. All right. Now we know right here in Mark twelve, uh, you know, verse thirty. There he says, "And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul." And with all thy mind and with all thy strength. For this is the first commandment. This is the first commandment. Now we're going to slide on over to 1 Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5, verses 5 and 6. When somebody gets there, you can go ahead and read that. First Peter chapter 5. Verse 5 and 6. Chapter 5. Verse 5 and 6. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourself unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Amen. So he gives grace to, to the what? To the humble. To the humble. Not the proud. For God what? The proud? Resist he resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Yeah. Now, now, what's the next verse say? It says, "Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time." That's in His time. In due time. <coughs> so, so what? It, that means you got to stay humble. So He's going to exalt you. Yeah. But you got to stay humble. You can't exalt yourself. You exalt yourself. God going to bring you down. Because that's prideful. That's that's your own boasting. That's your own prideful thing. God's going to bring that to the ground. But if you humble yourself in the sight of God, He's going to exalt you in His due time. But I think so many people get caught up with that, and they, you know, they go around with their own self pride. Uh, you know, uh, swelled up with their own pride. You know, with their own man's pride, in other words. And uh, you know, God God resists that. Uh, you know, you don't get the mercy uh, or the grace. The grace is to the humble. So we know right now to have a true walk with God, we got to love God with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, and all of our strength. We got to humble ourselves. We got to humble ourselves uh, in the sight of God. For that's how, you know, the, the grace is given to the humble. Uh, you know, He uh, he resists us the proud. So uh, it does no good to be proud. Man's pride, you know. Pride didn't come to fall, you know. So when you're swelled up in yourself, you know, and you think you're this and you think you're that, God's about to bring you to the ground. He's about to bring you to the ground. And, uh, you know, so getting that true walk, that true walk, are we to do all things to the glory of God? Anybody want to answer that? Well, yeah. yeah. Everything we do better be to magnify God. Huh. We're to do all things. All things. All things. To, to give the glory to God. the glory For the glory of God. Mm-hmm. But now hang on a second. Now when you get prideful in yourself and you get swelled up, blowed up, that's for yourself, ain't it? Yeah, but it ain't for yeah, God. Yeah, but it won't go no more. Just stand there and spin, spin, spin around and around and around. That's all you're going to do. <laughs> right, right. That's all you're going to do. So we you're got. always going to let people down. Now, well, now, always, now, now we get into something. Always going to let God down and people down. And now we're getting into something. Now we're getting into something. Uh, 
Somebody in there go to 1 Corinthians 10 and 31. Yep, First Corinthians ten thirty one. Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Woo! Mm. Whatsoever you do, whatsoever you do, do it for the glory of God. Amen. But honestly, out here, let's say in, in the popular church world out here today, how many people's caught up into not doing that? Hey, I'll go here and be this way, and I'll act this way at my house, and I'll act this way at my job, and I'll act this way when I get mad, and I'll act this way when I get angry, I'll act this way when I get sad, I'll act this way when I get this, I'll act this way when I get that. It's untelling the number of people that does that. Huh. But shouldn't we be doing all things to give glory to God? Oh, yeah. Now, to have that true walk with God, don't we need to do that? Yeah, we got to. Don't we need to do that? We, we, we've got to humble ourselves. We've got to learn that we've got to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, strength. But wouldn't it be so much easier to do that if all the so-called Christians was sold out and done it through everybody done it? <laughs> well, of course. Boy, wouldn't it be so much of easier Of course so. Of course so. It would... Uh, you know, this is a hard road, you know, to heaven, in other but words. Got so because it really don't bother you or don't aggravate you if a sinner or somebody claiming flat out to be nothing. You know, don't do this stuff. Well, right I here, mean, you worry about them, but when you got somebody that's really claiming to be saved and sold out and doing this stuff, then that's when it... It gets you down there. Yeah. <laughs> right. But it shouldn't. No, it, it shouldn't. shouldn't. But it shouldn't. And uh, so, Pastor Eddie... Yes. Pastor Eddie, when we give something, let's say we got something, all right, that we're going to give. We're going to give to somebody, okay? Yeah. We got something, but it didn't cost us nothing. It's of no value to you, correct? Right. Didn't cost you nothing. You didn't have to do nothing for it. Right. It's of very little value to you. Right. Right? So it's right. pretty easy to give it. Yeah. Correct? Right. Now, if you had to pay a lot of money for that thing... Or you had to work real hard for that thing. Would it be a little harder to give? Yeah, but if God told me to, I'd give it. But it would mean something, yeah. wouldn't it? Well, yeah. It'd mean something to you then, wouldn't it? Right. It would mean something to you. All right? So, to have a true walk with God, we must give Him our time, our talents, and our treasures. Because He don't want you a little bit. No, He wants you all. He don't Look here, it don't cost nothing. If it don't cost nothing, it ain't worth nothing. <laughs> Do you understand that? A true walk with God cost you. It would cost you. Yeah, but just because it don't cost nothing don't mean it don't mean nothing. Right. It's because I got I, I've had a lot of stuff that I've not paid for that's really meant something to me. Right. You know, my poor granny, she's dead and gone now, but I could take her stick and, and give it to her. And she would cherish that stick. Why? Because she it wouldn't let gave, nothing happen. It was gave from the heart. Why? Well, yeah. Well, well, you get back to the woman that Christ forgave her sins, and she had great sins. Yeah. She had many sins, and and she was what? She was more grateful than the rest. You know. And right. Christ said, "Look, she had more sins. She got more to be thankful for." My like brother, that. he made he made some sticks of hammers and. Just different things he made out of a knife. Wood. She had it in a pouch. When she died, she still had that little pouch of wood. It was burned. But, but, let, let's get to this. How many people try to have a true walk with God, but they don't give him everything? A whole lot. Now, can you have a true walk with God and not give him everything? See how you can do it, but you know, they do if it. you can do it, you tell me how. They do it. People do it. Well, I think you got to grow to get to that yeah. place. Well, well, we're gonna we're gonna you know definitely get into a little bit more of that. But uh, you know, does it cost 
Christ repeatedly tells you count the cost. Mm-hmm. Count the cost. It's going to cost you. It's going to cost you these worldly things. It's going to cost you. Some of your family's not going to like you no more. It's going to cost you your best friends that you thought was your best friends. It's going to cost you probably money. It's going to cost you your time. It's going to cost you your devotion. It's going to cost you all kinds of things. You know, Chris, there's people right now said, probably even said it when you, you got saved. Well, I'll give him a week and he'll be out. <laughs> right. I mean, there, there's people takes bets on us if we're going to make it or not. We ought to be saying he's going to make it in the name of Jesus. Instead of walking around saying, well, uh, I wonder if he's going to, I'll give him a week and he'll be doing the same old stuff. Right, right. Why, you know what you just done to that man? It's sunk him. Well, we definitely speak life or death with our tongue. You know? Why, you, so. you just killed him. You might well took a gun and point it in his face and blow his head off. Well, let me ask you something, all right? Now, you know that God knows that we live in this world, so we we, we live here. Well, of course so. So we've got to have means to live, right? Right. All right, all right now, if God blesses me, all right, I'm going to use me. If God blesses me with something for me, he gave it to me. Do you think he wants it back? No. No. He gave it to me. Well, it's, well, it, well, it's let me, mine, well, well, right? let, well, let me go that right here with you. God blessed Abraham with Isaac. Yeah, right. And he said, give him back to him. Right. But he didn't take him. No, but why did he do that? Because Isaac was getting put in, in front with him. Right. Yeah, right. Huh. Now, I, that's what I'm saying. Though. <coughs> if, if I need, all right, if I need, just for instance, if I need $20, and God blesses me some way with that twenty dollars. Now, does he want that back? He gave it to me. So if I had a need for it, then it goes for what I had that need for, right? God don't want it back. I don't think he does. Well, well I may be wrong. Well, I'm, I'm sure. Think. I'm sure that it'd go for the need that you had. I'm sure. But she's asking, would God want that back? Here's the question: Will you give it back? <laughs> right, I, right. I see that question. I, I can see that point. Now, why would you sure. give it back if you didn't feel like you need to give it back? Well, I don't know. You might. I might not would. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just. <laughs> I'm just saying. For, you have to come to that point is. first. <laughs> <laughs> what you was talking about. The point. The point is, is if if God blesses you with something. And, and, and you're going to say, whenever he healed the, the, the couple men there from the leprosy, they all left, and only one came back to thank him, give him praise. He said, where's the rest at? Right. Where's the rest at? In other words, he gave you the $20 to help you on your thing. Are you going to pay him back? Are you going to send praise to him? Are you going to worship him for that? Right. Are you going to spread his name? Are you going to go above and beyond because God done for you? Or are you just going to take it and run with it and use it for what you want to? Right. That's what I'm saying, though. If, you're, if God blesses you with something, you're really <laughs> trying to live right. And you're really doing what you're supposed to be doing. Then God blessed you with that. It's yours. Bobby put a pretty good point on there. He said, "He said, would you tie two dollars of it back?" <laughs> <laughs> well, sure. Amen. Amen. But you know, you was talking about a while ago. You're gonna lose friends when you start walking with God. Oh yeah, ain't no doubt. I did. I lost a friend that we were friends for. 23, 24 years. And when I started my walk with God, sold out to God, she will not talk to me. She may holler at me every once in a while on the, you know, how you doing, you know, are you okay? But I mean, as a friend friend like we was, she will not. Because... She don't want what I've got, you know. There's a lot of people that don't, and she can't have what I've got. No. But she don't want Jesus. I'll put it that way. Right, right. Because she thinks her sin. I'll just be blunt. She thinks her shacking is more important than God is. Right, right. Which you is, know, or which her is, men. Which is what we're gonna get into that a little bit here too. Uh. But, you know, on counting that cost, on how costly it is, let's remind, let's not forget 
that God reminds us of the warning. Of the warning. Let's go to Revelation. Let's go to Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3, and I think it's verse 16. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Uh oh. Uh oh. Not being totally sold out to God, not being on fire for God, but you wasn't cold. But you was right there in the middle. You was lukewarm. He was lukewarm. He's going to spew you out of his mouth. That's what's going to happen to, to I'm going to say, I'm going to throw a big percentage out there and say 75%. Because they think that they can serve God and do it their way. And I got news for you. You can't. You can't. <laughs> so why do we got all these different religions? Why do we got all these different people that say, hey, you can do it all these different ways? I do. In other words, I serve God my way, you serve God your way. And that's just the way it is. Yeah, but God ain't like that. <clears throat> I mean, he, he don't justify for you in, uh, in letting me, you know, go a different way. God is God. And we all got to live one way, and that's through Him. But I got a question. I'm... I'm... <laughs> I'm going to answer a question with the question. Right. If something is wrong for one, is it wrong for all? Well, it may take somebody longer to acknowledge that it's wrong for them. I, 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 you know, I think Paul said, if I know me to offend my brother, I'll not eat meat as long as the world standeth. As long as the world standeth. If I know that offended you, I'll stop doing it. Paul had, that, had his body, his flesh, that much under subjection, he controlled it to that point where I won't do it for the rest of my days. If I know it offended you, why? Why was that important? Yeah, because she, he's trying to win people to God. But she's talking about sin. I'm talking about, okay, you've got a ministry like we've got. Right. Okay, God shows one that this is wrong. This person... Can't do this because it's wrong. Well, see here, here is it wrong for the rest of well, us? See here, here's what we get into. He <laughs> says, "What? There's no secret revelation. There's no secret revelation. God's not going to tell you one thing and not tell nobody else. Why would He do that? He's not the God of confusion." Well, see, I was asked that question, and they want scripture on it. So now, so. now, now here's where we get tricky. Now I'm going to start to justify myself a little bit, okay? I'm going to justify myself and tell you that I think it's all right. I think it's all right because, hey, I do it. So I don't see nothing wrong with it. Maybe I'm doing that sin. I say, hey, I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. Well, I was asked that question over a certain thing. Myself, I don't do it. But they do. <coughs> well, I say that's sort of like smoking cigarettes. Mm -hmm. You talk to a lot of people, and they will say smoking cigarettes is a sin. That you're not supposed to hurt the temple of God, your body, and all this stuff. Right, right. Well, to them, it may actually be sin for them to ever pick a cigarette up. Right. But does that mean it's sin for me to pick one up? No, but here, here's what here's where the sin does come in, where Paul clarifies this does. That if you wound <coughs> the weak brother's conscience, then you sin. Right, I understand that because now if I'm around somebody and they don't smoke, they don't believe in smoking, you'll not see me light a cigarette up because I would not offend nobody by doing that. If I know they don't believe it, I'm not going to do it. So I, I think that's where the sin comes in. You know, so what? You, you, you're you all right. You know, you and God's all right with smoking a cigarette, you know. Uh, but somebody else thinks it's not. Same deal for eating the meat when Paul's talking about that. Yeah. He said if one eats the meat, you know, or don't eat meat, but he does it for God because he thinks eating the meat offends God. So he chooses not to eat that meat. Well, I say I'm eating the meat and I'm thanking God for the meat. And I'm eating the meat for God. And neither one's wrong. Neither one's wrong. Okay. Neither one's wrong. Have we got but, scripture? <laughs> but but now 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 let's get into 
Because you can't use the fruits of unrighteousness to try to justify them. Now, the fruits of unrighteousness, sin is sin. Sin is sin. If it's sin for you to lie, it's sin for me to lie, it's sin for any of us to. If if you are around... But you got to know that it's a sin, what you're talking about. Well, yeah. Is it a sin, or just does it... Somebody feel it's a sin. If you've got somebody around you that is sinning, you don't have to condone that sin. If it's if the word of God says it's a sin, they it's a sin. Yep. Amen. And when you bring that point out, if they don't accept it, you've done your part. Right? Right, because you can't make nobody not sin. Because you cannot well, adopt. Well, I can, just, tell you, I can tell you what the Word says. It says if a brother offends you, then you go to him. And you tell him about it. You point it out. If he rejects it, you take a witness or two back with you again. And if he rejects that, you take him before the congregation. Well, I'll use <laughs> my but, youngins for him. But then if, he, if they don't, you dust your feet. But you still can't make them not do it. No, right. you can't make him not do it, but when you take him before the church, the church is going to make a decision on what to do with this man. Right. right. How, how can he hold this position right. and still stand in this scene? Right. right. If he's in a ministry, you know, it's in a, yeah. Uh, but now, if nobody's not going to, to church, or nobody's not going nowhere to worship God, and they're, they're not a, affiliated with God in no way, then they're probably a sinner to begin with, honey. You're not going to change your mind. No. Well, I mean, that's, you know. But, I mean, you've got sinners out there. That ask you questions that just absolutely you have to go to the Word of God to prove your point. You know, on, on, you on certain things. Yeah, they, well, they want to the try word, to destroy says, you. The Word says avoid foolish conversation. Right. Yeah. That because it's only trying to cause strife and envy. Right. When people ask foolish questions like that, they're they're trying to they're trying to get you to slip up. They're trying to get you to say something that they can use against you. Avoid right. that. Avoid that. I had I had a guy work a, a thing with that with a guy at work, and it went on for probably a week. You know, two weeks. I was talking to him about God. And he don't believe. You know, he don't believe in God. And uh, and I was talking to him about God pretty hot and heavy when I was around him. You know, and uh, and it finally got to a point where he got you know he got angry. And uh, and you know he said uh, he said you can't prove to me nothing. They ain't no you can't do it. I've been all around the world. That's what he told me. I've been all around the world, and there ain't nothing you can't show me that I ain't seen, and you can't prove to me nothing. And my reply was, "You're exactly right." And I've not I've not had a conversation with him since. Some people you can't. <laughs> but that ain't to say I won't have another conversation with him. But as of right now, I choose not to. Why? Because he's going to try to use it against me. Because that's what he done in the last conversation. I'm not going to cast my pearls for a swine lest they turn the render on me. He, he's now taking what I'm trying to say and trying to use it against me. Stop. They'll do that. Stop. Because you're feeding the gun. You're putting ammunition in it. Right. Stop. Well, what do you do if it's your own family? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Walk away. Pray hard. That's who's in all that cook bill. Walk away. Amen. Amen. Is moving away good enough? <laughs> <laughs> but what what did Revelation tell us there? That you can't be lukewarm. That you can't be lukewarm or he's going to spew you out of his mouth. You better be hot. <laughs> Amen. God wants you all. Does, does God not want your best? Does he not want your best? He tells us to... Yeah. Like the song we do, 99 and a half won't do. Oh, but here we come. Oh, Lord, here we come. Here we come. We're going to praise God today. Here we come. Is that your best? Mm-hmm. Like, are you giving God your best? Are no. you giving Him your best? You might well stay at home with that attitude. I mean, are you giving God your best? Are you really, really loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength? Because if you are, you're going to give Him your best. Every if time. you are, you're gonna really, you're gonna really walk with God, Amen. You're really gonna be sold out to God. But that first commandment, that first commandment, and then the second goes like and with it. That's to love thy neighbor as I said. If you can't love someone that you have seen, 
how can you love someone that you haven't seen? Now, now we're going to get talked in. All right, now, now let's go to Genesis, all right? Let's go to Genesis chapter 4. Now, to have a true walk with God, do we not have to have a true heart for God? What was that question? In order to have a true walk with God, do we not have to have a true heart for God? Well, yeah. You have to have the desire. You have to have the desire before you can before your heart will ever get set with God. All right. All right, did anybody get to Genesis four? We're there. One through seven, please. <laughs> and Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought off the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought off the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth and he continued continence. Continent fail. Alright, hold up right there. Now what do we see taking place right there? Why did ones get accepted and ones didn't? I was well, to me, Abel was doing <coughs> what God asked him to do. There's a, they're di they're different here. Cain and Abel are different. Go back and read. I think it's verse. Uh, Verse 5. Well, it was like Cain didn't want to do it. Read verse 5, I think it is. But, but, but unto Cain and to his offerings... No, back up, back up. Verse 4. Give it, Paul. <laughs> and Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Abel brought his first, but Cain didn't. There it is. But, yeah. the, but Cain... I don't know it. His con his continents, like he was just Cain. Cain didn't bring his first, did he? No. Because why? Because he didn't have a true heart for God, did he? He wanted to keep it for himself. Cain he was the one that was. Cain was the one that was evil. He didn't have a true heart in that. Mm -mm. And God said, and, and the Lord said, "Why are you wrong? Does not sin lie at the door?" You keep reading there. He says, "Does not sin lie lies at the door?" Because you didn't bring me your first. You didn't bring me your first. You didn't have me on your mind. You wasn't trying to trying to please me. You was trying to please yourself. That's where the Lord tells us. But now that Cain brought his first. Read verse 3. Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. The fruit of the ground. Not the first. But I mean, he brought his before Abel did. But not the first. It wasn't his first fruit. Yeah. It wasn't his first fruit. Why does God want your first fruit? He wants your best. He Isn't wants your best. God tells us in his word. You better put God he before He is number else. one. Because he's a jealous God. If we can't put God number one, what does he say we are? I tell you, if you don't put God number one, then you can't have a true walk with God. No. That's for sure. That's because for sure. if the Word of God says, like, 
I'll repeat it again. If the Word of God says it, it's so. Amen. If it don't Amen. say it, it's no. But, you know, Abel, Abel had a heart for that. He gave with a pure heart. He brought the first, the first fruit, and it was evident. He brought the first. He brought the first with a pure heart for God. Here it is. I'm giving it to you, God. You bless me with it, and I'm giving it to you. And Cain had a jealous heart. And Cain? Uh, not so much. Not so much. He didn't have that pure heart, did he? He had a jealous heart. He didn't have that pure heart. So He we, knew where Abel was headed. So we must have a true and a pure heart. We must have a true and a pure heart. You can't have a pure heart if you ain't got the de if you haven't got the desire to serve God. Amen. Then well you can't well, have a pure you know, heart. That's, uh, all right now. Which brings us into our next topic. Alright. Which is in order to have a true walk with God, we must have we <coughs> must have the Holy Spirit. We must have the Holy Spirit and truth. And only born again Christians. Right. We're talking about you must have the Holy Spirit and the truth. And only born again Christians have both of these. Only born again Christians have both of these. They have both of these elements needed to have a true walk with God. Christ said, you must be born again, or you will no wise enter in. You must be born again. You have to be covered by the blood, regardless. You must be born again. Now, let's get to that. You know, in order to be born again, means you died, you become a new creature in Jesus Christ. Yeah. means you put off all the old things, and all has become as new now. Right? Right. Then why is it over time you fall right back into that old? Most people. Most people. When you first got born again, when they say they got born again, they was lighting up the whole world, son. You couldn't help but to see God in them. They were shining bright. Everything had changed. They've lost Everything. Lost their desire. desire. Everything had changed. Lost their desires. That takes you back to the word desire again. <laughs> Your heart has to desire it. Well, let's 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 put it this way. Does all right? Let's go to Romans chapter one because do you guys believe that anything you put in front of God becomes your God? Supposed to put nothing for God. Chapter 1, verse 21 through 25. Amen. Bobby says on here, Abel gave from the heart with love. Cain didn't want to give because it took from his profit. And he says, Cain was selfish. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So now we're going we're going to pop over to uh, Romans chapter one, verse twenty one through twenty five. <coughs> Whoever's got it can take off with. Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing them themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corrupt corruptible man, and to birds, and for four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Woo! Now, now go back to that first verse you read. Read it again? Yeah, that first one you read. 
because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Now, they knew God. Is that not what he says? But they did what now? They glorified him not as God. But they knew God. <coughs> but they knew God. But they glorified him not as God. That's when a lot of, that's why a lot of things are going today. Ah, yeah, now stop and think about that. Stop and think about that. They knew him as God. Yeah. They knew him as God. But they glorified him not as God. They glorified him not as God. Now, God is a spirit. We must worship God in spirit and truth. In spirit and in truth. <coughs> Any other way don't cut it, does it, Pastor? No. Any other way don't fly. Don't fly to my cat. Now, can you worship God in the in the flesh, in the carnal mind? No. You can, but it won't do no good. It's it's vain, ain't it? It's in vain. It ain't no good for nothing. But how many people is trying to do that? Oh, Lord. I say about 75, 80 percent of the people. How many people is really out there in the church world today? How many people really is caught up into that? That they walk in, <coughs> they think they're worshiping God, and, 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 and the truth be told, they probably don't know what they're worshiping. For the truth be told, because you can only worship God in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. You can't walk in in the flesh and in the corner of mind and worship God. Get out of your common minds. But yet, so many churches are doing it. So many people are doing it. Well, that, that's when you're talking about that feel good. Ah! Oh, mm -hmm. so now we're going to get into something. Ain't we? They worship the now, beast. They go in there and they're right? not worshiping God. They're worshiping that uh, feel good. In 23. Well, I can tell you, many people worship, worship something the, that they, they call God. Stuff. Right. But it's not the God of the Bible. Right. Nor or are these people that say that Is they're that worshiping that God, that these, these God? many people that that, are, that say they worship God, but it's not the God of the Bible. Right. And they are not being led by the Holy Spirit. Right. And their worship is, it, and their worship is unacceptable to God. Because if it was, if they was worshiping so so the creatures the God that we know out of the Bible, they would go out here and take care of the will. Yeah. Well, we got a phone call. They were the creatures instead of God. That's the way I took it. You got to save America one soul at a time. Who's on that end? You know, Sister Terry, Chris. All right. Okay, I stopped in. I've caught a little bit of this, but just to put me in here, for my opinion, all people need the gospel because they're under God's wrath. And it stems from his holy revulsion to sin, okay? Mankind originally knew God and fellowshiped with him. But here again, they drift away. They get a, a regression and loss of moral knowledge. And since the Garden of Eden, people have been unrighteous. And they have suppressed the truth. God as creator has disclosed himself in creation the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. That's right. Um, people also have an innate capacity for God, as well as moral conscience. God is at work to show himself in the world, yet the world is in rebellion against him. Mm -hmm. Mankind's problem is not that he doesn't know the truth. The history of the human race discloses a determined effort to oppose the will of God. People are without excuse for their idolatry and practical atheism, okay? Because of human willfulness, people's knowledge of God became clouded, and their thinking became darkened. And without contact with God, the center of man loses contact with reality. He misses the purpose of his existence and becomes ungrateful. People are supposed to glorify him as God, but instead find all sorts of created objects to worship, and that's part of the wrath of God. It, it, it's revealed in humanity's loss of intelligence, most things, you know, like when we're thinking and stuff. What we see backward, you know, they're graven images. They worshiped on them. 
many people think that religion developed along as an evolutionary model, and it's in this view humanity originally held animalistic beliefs and progress to the polytheism. And, the, you know, the tribal deities, just the stuff that... And then they get to a single creator, which is God. They go from idols and animals to God, okay? And then from there we progress to a vague philosophical monotheism in the Enlightenment. And finally, we are now embracing atheism in the age of science because all these people are turning away from God. It's in today's world that they're, they're turning away. They're not keeping their ears open. They're not opening their hearts. They're becoming all self-centered, and they're not reaching out. That's what we are. We're the sowers. We're, we're sowing God's word. As each one of you there, each one listening in, and myself, we are sowers of God's word. And when we sow it, we're hoping it's falling on fertile soil instead of concrete. Because if it's falling on concrete, it's not going to take root and grow. So we're, we're praying it's on that fertile soil. So it's going to take root, they're going to open up, and they're going to accept God into their heart. Amen. And I don't know, because they reject the truth of God, you know, it's revealed in creation. God punishes. If we don't listen, they're going to be punished in the end. Oh, if yeah. That's just all it is to it. So it's just that's sad. all I got to say. It's just sad that, you know, people actually believe the lie and be damned, you know. <coughs> yeah. They believe yeah. their own lie. They, they get convinced of their own lie. Yep. Yeah. And when they cut off from the life of God, they're bringing a spiritual death upon themselves, too. Amen. And it just, you know, people open your hearts up. Look around. He's still alive. He's not dead. He, he's showing us all kinds of signs. Wake up. I'm getting ready to come back and gather you home. If you're not ready, you're going to hell. Amen. Right. Amen. That's, that, that's it in a nutshell. So, I find myself busy every day, which I'm thankful for this. I'm sowing seeds. I've, I've become a sower of the word. So I pray continuously. God keeps me as a sower. I don't mind being behind that plow and dropping them seeds as I'm digging a furrow in the ground. I just pray they take root and they accept Jesus into their life. Amen. That's, that's all I had to say. Y'all have a blessed night, and i got to get back to work. All right. Love you. Pray for this uh, funny sounding voice I've got tonight. Yeah, you sound like your throat might be acting up. Uh, yeah, I've been a little under the weather, but I still talk about my Jesus. He's my Lord and Savior. Amen. And you'll see me through this, and I'm rebuking this. Amen. I just need some prayers to help back me up on it. That's right. <laughs> and thank you all for a blessed night and a wonderful message, and I'll see you all Saturday. All righty. Love you all. And bye. Amen. Amen right. and amen. I'm telling you, God's good now. <laughs> All the time. Amen. But people are getting caught up into that false religion. They are getting caught up in I can serve God my way, you can serve God your way, that I can serve God and serve sin too. And you can't. You can't. I don't care how you spin it, spin it upside down, put it on a donut. You can't do it. The word of God tells you no sin shall enter in. You can't do it. But so many, so many churches, so many people are teaching that. How are they teaching it? You got the blind leading the blind. Why? Because the pastor is just as guilty as, as the congregation. He's got just as much sin in his life as they do there. <coughs> and he's trying to tell them about Christ, and they're all hearing about Christ, but they're seeing something else. And everybody's seeing what goes on, and everybody's hearing what's going on amongst themselves, and everybody's talking about everybody in the congregation, having their get-together when they get together, and talk about how short the dresses are, and what everybody's doing, and what's happening this week, and what's going on. And that's why most of them gather up together. I've been there. I've heard it. I've seen it. I know. That's why most of them gather up. And then, my God, and then they're like, oh, oh my God, I'm serving God. I'm worshiping God. I come to worship God. Now you come to talk about Jack or Sue. That's what you came to do. You come to talk about somebody, put somebody down. That's what you came here to do. But people need to get back to knowing how do you get that true walk with God? How do you, the true walk with God. Not what somebody taught you. Not what the church is doing down the street. We talking about a one on one. With the great one. How do you get that?
So when we get to, like we were saying, many, there's a whole lot of people that worship a whole lot of things that they call God, but it's not really God. Right. And these people are not being led by the Holy Spirit. You can tell. You can see it in their lives. You can see it all, you know, in all the things that they do. They're not being led by the Holy Spirit. They show fruits of unrighteousness. They show the fruits of unrighteousness, the anger, the molasses, the wrath, the, the envy, the strife. It's all in there. So when you see all this, they're like, well, I'm worshiping God. Hey, I'm serving God. Well, something wrong. Something wrong. Something wrong already. Well, you go back to 25. And it says that they're, they worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. Well, yeah, that's what they, you know, that's what most people do. Uh, you know, let, let, let's get into this, all right? Let's get into this for a minute. For me, from what I've seen, for me, from what I've seen, I think there's a great problem in most of the churches today because, you know, for me, for what I see, what kind of worship that's happening is an emotion worship. Now, I'm going to explain that a little better. But and an emotion worship. And you know what what I like to get into with that is is people are basing their relationship with God based on feelings. Mm -hmm. Uh in other words, hey, I feel good right now. You know, when 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 we get into a good service and everything's moving, you know, knowing that, hey, I feel good. You know, I feel good, I feel good. But then when I don't feel good, I'm going to growl and complain and, and then just, I'm going to base it on feelings. <laughs> I'm going to base my walk of, with God on feelings. You do that. Mm, you do that. <laughs> I know I don't. <laughs> go, in other words, they go and get well, their feel them. good. That's what. They like to get their feel good on. <laughs> and then words. when, and. Any other time, no. Well, the, the the relationship, you know, what I, what I see, the relationship is based on feelings. Mm -hmm. Based on feelings. Uh, our relationship with God can't be just based on feelings. No. It can't just be based on feelings. Uh, you think you're going to feel good all the time? I mean, you think Peter felt good when they crucified him upside down? You think Christ felt good? When they took him to the cross and crucified him, placed the crown thorns on his head, you think that felt good? No, it hurt. I'm sure he <laughs> felt the pain, too. Well, see, that's where the saying, what greater are we than he? But did Christ complain? No. No. But the we? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, ain't there something wrong with that? Something wrong with that picture, ain't it? Yeah. Ain't there something wrong with that? Yep. <laughs> yeah, well, they were. You know, we go through a, a surgery. Oh, I'm hurting, I'm hurting. I can't go to church today. <laughs> yeah, because we're supposed to do all things to give what? Honor. Give God glory. To give glory to God. Now, how do we give God glory? By whining and complaining. <laughs> we don't. Are we not taking it? We're saying, Lord, help us fight, go away. <laughs> Yeah. Now, 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 wait a minute. Now, enough saying that. Are we not? Are we back to what the word says there? He said, "In vain glory, in vain glory." Are we not taking away the glory of God when we do those things? We're not giving it to Him. No, I hope not. <laughs> are we not turning the God, the uncorruptible God, the Almighty One and Only True Living God, that all things are possible through when we do this? Are we not saying the exact opposite? Yeah, I guess we are when we when we're claiming the pain instead of giving God the glory. I guess we are. Huh? So is their relationship with God based on a feeling? Mm, I hope no. not. But you know, I, I see that going on in a lot of churches. It's based on a feeling. <coughs> uh, it ain't only church. No, it, it, it's in homes. Well, yeah, it's, in homes yeah. Too. <laughs> it's, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Uh, but you know, a lot of people's relationship with God, I, I've seen, is based on feelings. Uh, in other words, uh, in other words, a true walk with God. In order to get there, to get to that true walk with God, we must learn 
That it's well, not about us. Some more than others, but everybody... It's about God's will being done in our lives. We're supposed to make sure God's will is done in our lives. Well, what are, you, what are we going to do now? And now, is this not saying the contrary, taking the glory back away from God when I say, I get up in the morning and I say, God, your will be done in my life. But then when this happens, no, I ain't doing that. <laughs> I ain't going there. I ain't doing that. You've got to do it whether you want to or not. Or I'm hurting, so I ain't going over here. If, or I feel bad, so I ain't doing this. Or I wonder how many times we've said that. Well, just, yeah. just wait. If God says, do this, and we go do that, you're bad, Jeff. Then what? You're real bad today. <laughs> well, listen, let, 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 let me break this down on a... On a on a, on a human stand view, okay? Let me try to do that. Okay? Now, if if my love for you, Vicky, is based on feelings, you then... You're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why so many people's in trouble, ain't it? Listen, if, if my love for you is based on feelings, <laughs> then guess what? We in for a roller coaster ride, man. In you know, you see what I'm saying, though. We in for a roller coaster. Why? Because I'm gonna be happy with you one minute, and I ain't gonna like you the next. Because you're gonna do something that's gonna make me not feel good. And if my love is based on feelings, just them, just how you make me feel, is that real love? No. We. How do I say? Oh, I got deep in the pipe. <laughs> I did it, brother. I said it. I don't know if you can live to, to tell this one or not. Everybody. <laughs> I can only hold off so many of them, Chris. <laughs> right. It'd be all right. <laughs> if we don't. I don't know how to say it. A lot of people are scared of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because they're, they don't know what it's going to do with them. There's only one thing that we're supposed Aren't we supposed to fear God? Amen. Why? Why? Because he can destroy both body and soul and lay a fire. Okay. Why do men fear each other? They can only destroy the body. We're not supposed to. Okay. Now, <laughs> I'm trying to get a point across the reason I'm doing this. We want to feel God, but we don't want to feel His Pain. power. His pain, His power, all the things that we might have to go through. That brings you back to feeling the Holy Ghost. All the things, yeah. You know, because the Holy Ghost is so strong. Right. So strong. And a lot of people don't want to feel nothing strong. Okay, they're talking. All right, Pastor, what do you got to say? All right, now, it's done been proven that everybody complains. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it is. I mean, everybody can blame. Well, I... I mean, I'm according, according to that, now. according to that, we're all going to have to repeat. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I mean, it's true. Hey, I mean... With the truth is, do we want a true walk with God? Do we really want... It's going to cost you. Even, when, even if you're hurting, you still got to... You got to praise God. You got to praise God. You got to praise God. I <laughs> And complain on top of it. You gotta praise God. You gotta praise God. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> I mean, this old body aches, but the soul. Yeah, but you know what? God know. He knows about our bodies, and He understands. Ah, uh, I'm gonna stop you right there. We ain't making no excuses in this little room, brother. I'm gonna stop you on that one. Well, I'm trying. Well. We can't do that. Uh, the reason so that means none of us is going to heaven because we all complain. 
Well, I definitely never said that. <laughs> well, but what I am we gotta get right, man. What I am saying is, the, what does the word or does it not tell us not to be mummers and complainers? Yeah, but we do, Chris. Now, now I'm gonna show you something. <laughs> that, that's over. The word tells us that mummers and complainers. Yeah, but we do. They gonna have their part in the late fight. Yeah, but we do. <laughs> uh oh. So, so, so now what? The pastor, you going to hell or what? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> what? A, honestly, what are we supposed to do? Is our fans just going to hell over it? <laughs> no, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> if this old buddy, I love it, buddy. I love it. <laughs> if this old buddy acts, what? <laughs> <laughs> what are we supposed to do? Don't complain about it, honey. You go to Oh, good. Oh, I wish you got in the chamber to be in <laughs> I'm about to be murdered. <laughs> oh, goodness. No, but it's good. But we're not supposed to complain. Hey, we're supposed to take the Word of God and eat the Word of God. But why don't you do that? Well, I can do that, but I can't put that. I got to look at you when I ask you this question. Why do you do it for our brother? Hey, now, now, now I, can, I can tell you this. I, I, there are places in my life, uh, you I'm know, sorry. when the kids get, get rowdy and I complain, you know, uh, there are a couple places in there that I do do some complaining. Uh, we all do, Chris. But you know, I complain too about aches and pains and stuff. But now, there is a lot of times that I'll say, God, help me to not complain about this. <laughs> help me to feel better to where I won't be complaining. Amen. Amen. Well, what I asked God this morning, God, if you, can, <laughs> if you take this pain, I can do what I'm supposed to do and not complain. Well, you uh, know, you know, he might keep it there just to keep you to humble. keep you just humble. Keep you, yeah, keep now, you now, <laughs> now, now, let's get back to that walking in the spirit. <coughs> now, if we was walking in the spirit, like the word tells us to, mm -hmm. we're walking in the spirit, mm -hmm. not in the carnal mind. Yeah, the carnal mind is enmity against God. Mm -hmm. It's not subject to the prayers of God. Right. Neither, indeed, can it be. Right. It's enmity against God. So, when we're in this corner of mind, when they're in this corner of mind, that's when we complain. Guess what? We're going we're gonna to think like the flesh, ain't we? Mm. That can stop everything that with can, God. So, it, it can I cause can. a whole lot of things to happen that shouldn't have happened. Right. When I'm up there preaching, I don't even think about a pain one. Because I'm not. When the anointing, well, the Word of God tells us to walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Okay. The spirit. When we step out of the Spirit of God, that is when you feel so, physical pain. Well, there's a difference between anointing and walking in the Spirit. I mean, you, yeah. can, you can walk in the Spirit, but now we're in these flesh and bodies that things are going to happen. <laughs> these bodies are going to break down. <laughs> well, things are going to start happening. So there's going to be a bone that'll hurt. Well, the muscle that to. hurt. There's, there's going to. But that's still not. Oh, mean. my bad. That, that <laughs> don't give us no right well, to mumble and complain. Like, they supposed to last forever. But that don't give us the right to mumble and complain. No, but we do. We're humans. Oh, you mean you're walking in the flesh? I'm going to remind you that next time you say your foot, foot <laughs> hate hurt and you want to uh, foot rub. <laughs> Now, there's a difference. Are they not a difference between saying, now, my back hurts? Right. And just walk around all day. Oh, oh my God. God. Complaining and mumbling. And, right. Oh, good. I can't do nothing. Everybody just, my back hurts. I'm down. You know, my back. Mumbling and complaining. Mumbling and complaining. But there's, uh, is there a difference in that? Well, I'm sure. I mean, if my back hurts, it hurts. <laughs> I mean, hey, my back hurts. Yeah, but, but, but are you saying, <laughs> is there my a back difference? Hurt? God forgive me for saying that. Why not? But now, if I walk around and I say, if I you say, say it twenty four seven, if I'm just walking around and, and oh my God, my back is killing me, and I just keep saying it and keep talking about it and just keep saying it and keep talking about it. I'm mumbling and complaining. The yeah. children of Israel, when when Moses let them out, they were wandering around in the wilderness for forty years because they wouldn't quit their mumbling and complaining. But, but what was they? Uh, That's why we ain't got no murmuring word. and complaining about the children of Israel. Well, yeah, they was because they had to, we had it better there. But was it because their foot hurt? 
Well, I'm sure. Sure. We had it better than that. We're starving now. Or was it because they didn't know what they were going to do? No, no, it's because they said, we didn't have no, we ain't got no food now. They had food there. Right. We ain't got no clothes here. We had clothes there. We ain't got nothing to lay down here on, we did there. We ain't got no water. It was there. (laughs) Right. I mean, we complain about a backache or a foot ache, but our big complaint is when we're like the children of Israel. (laughs) We ain't got no money. What we going to do? There's another one. There's our big complaint. There's another one. Uh. And you know, I'm, I'm number one guilty. But we're oh, supposed man. to do what? All no, things. No. Trust oh, me. I'm, I'm doomed for hell, man. All <laughs> things to the glory of God. <laughs> Are we not? They caught me off guard. Are we not supposed to do that? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Are we doing it? Nope. No, no. Okay, but, but, but you got to be careful because then you're going to teach yourself into falling into that false religion that now says it's okay for me not to do that. And it ain't okay. No. By no means is it not okay. Hard. By all means, you should be grabbing a hold of it. I should be grabbing a hold of it. By all means, we should be learning. Yeah. And not making up excuses for why we can still get away with it. Because that's what most people do. Well, I tried it. You wouldn't let me. Is that... I mean... <laughs> all I can say is God... Whoop me for it. <laughs> well, he is. Every time you have a play. Yeah, <laughs> brother boy. Yeah, so. Says God help us all. God right. help us all, brother boy. <laughs> brother boy, you better come down here and lay hands on some people. It's getting deep in here, brother. Oh, goodness. My goodness. All right, but, but check this out. When, now, when we allow emotions to control our relationship, <coughs> we're going to talk about them emotions. Uh, you know, if I'm letting... My love towards you, you know, based on feelings or emotions, control our relationship. Yeah. Um, then our relationship becomes crazy, don't it? It becomes out of control. It becomes just spiraling. Uh, because it'll be up one minute, down the next minute, over here the next minute, over there the next minute. I like you, I don't like you. I, I, you know, arguing, fighting. People uh, get mad at each other too yeah, much. I mean, over these little silly things. You can love. If you love somebody, you have feelings. Yeah, and, but you can love them and not love what they're doing. All right, let me ask you. Let me pop a question out here. Can I? Can I please pop a question? Go ahead. All right. So I don't know. I might be walking up. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Pastor, <laughs> come over here and stand in front of me. I ain't been doing it. Wrong, bro. Anyway, pop a question out here. Did you get to choose who you fell in love with? Well, no. no. Was that based on a feeling? Did you already know them? How did, how come you already love them? I I now are we talking? Are, where are you going, Chris? Where are you, are you going, going with this? Husband, wife, love, or friend, love? Yeah, I'm yeah. talking about real love. I'm talking about real love. I'm talking about real love, not no man-made love, not know what man tells me love is, not what man says I can love my child and molest it because he's a liar. Well, I mean, God puts that in your heart because there's actually been people that I've absolutely told myself I will not like that person. And I will not love that person. I won't have nothing to do with that person. Right. I, 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 I have do done it, that. But then it happened. Right. Is that because saying, that is when <laughs> well, that well, is so when God use, has the most. But we're going to use we're going to use everybody in this room though. Did you get to choose who you fell in love with? No. No. Okay. So that love wasn't based on nothing. No. Wasn't based on feelings. No. It was something no. God put in your heart. It was just something just that because that person made you feel good. That didn't make you love them. No. You didn't even know them at that point. No. That, that good. No. Huh. My heart was jumping on my chest. But, 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 if if that love is based on a feeling, on a feel-good feeling, <laughs> if, if my relationship is based on that feel-good feeling, and I only like you when you make me feel good, we're going to have problems. You cannot <laughs> love. Now we know how you feel. Chris. You cannot have true love. The uh, true, I'm going to put it this way. You cannot have the true love of God in your heart if you can walk up to someone and look them in the eyes and tell them that you hate them. Well, check this out. Now, how many people do you think tries to have that same relationship with God? A lot of them. Based on feelings. A lot. 
Because they don't want to oh, die God, and go I'll to hell. I'll shout your name and I'll give you glory and honor and I'll jump up and down when you make me feel good. But what do they do when they don't oh, feel no, good? I don't feel good. I'm a mom and complain and I ain't going to give you no glory no more. <laughs> there you go. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what I'm going to tell you. And you can think of whatever it's worth. This is what's on my heart. Is one. This is one. I, I, let me see how I'm going to say it. <laughs> Just spit it out. Actions speak louder Amen. than words. Amen. Well, of course so. Your action tells you if you love Jesus or not. Right. I mean, because I go and do something for Sister Pauline. That don't mean you that love That don't mean Pauline. I love her. No, no. I don't, I mean, that, that's just trying to... That's get, the no, love of go God. Go back to the Bible. Go back to the Bible when the when the man went to this woman's house and, and she just had just enough. Right. Just enough for her, for her and her, and her son. son. Well, now, she had to have love about her or she couldn't have never made that man a whole cake. And, when, and when, she, when he did, when she did, obey God. I mean, I, you know, obey. Obey him. what God said. Yeah. Her barrels was running plumb full. Well, of course so. Her bar- her barrels never and run made, empty. You they, know, and to me, that's no. what. But now that goes to, you know, right back to where you can do everything in the world naturally for somebody. That don't mean you love But them. without that feeling, that love feeling there, you don't love, you ain't loving them either. No, right. you, can, you, no. you can go out here and do all kinds of works just like the people in Matthew done all these works and, and, and they said, we done this in your name and he said, depart from me. You words of an You've done I, it in vain. I, I never knew you. You done it in vain. You can do. You can go do all the works you want to for somebody down the road, and that don't mean you love them. No, that don't mean you love them. Right. But the word of God tells us if we don't love our brothers and sisters, whom we ain't seen, whom we oh, have we seen, have seen. I'm sorry. how can we love the one that we, we haven't seen? seen. That's the Amen. Word. Now, did, did Christ? That, I'm gonna bring this to the you. word. <laughs> did, did, do we think that Christ loved Peter? Jesus loves everybody. Uh, he rebuked him and called him the devil. Right, and that was because he loved him. Huh? Well, that didn't make Peter feel to, too good, did it? No, it didn't. But still, it was to show Peter he was in the wrong. Amen. And when we rebuke our brothers or sisters, that is to tell them we love them. We want them to straighten up what? and get but guess right. guess what? Peter's love for Jesus wasn't built on feelings either. Right. No. no. Because if it was, he'd have quit serving him right then. Right. He would have walked. He, he, he wouldn't. He would have. So what did Peter do? He didn't quit. He didn't give up. He didn't run off. What did he do? Because he loved him. Because right. he loved him. Right. It wasn't based on a feeling. It was sent by God. He loved it. When God puts a love in your heart, there is no man that can take that love away. Now, let me ask you a question. And that's just the way I feel about it. A lot of these people, (coughs) just like tonight, it's raining outside, muddy outside, nasty outside. Where's the people at? That, at home in the bed where I should be? Well, wait a minute now. <laughs> well, now don't. you got to have love in your heart to come. No matter if it's storming, raining, hailing, or Amen. whatever. Amen. you got to have love in your heart to do something for God. Well, well, well that, that goes now. along with Hang your on, desire, Hang too. On. Right? But Hang, now, so, Hang on. Somebody could be doing something for God without it being here. For the, yeah, I mean, well, right, right, and right, right. Another point. Yeah. Somebody could be doing something and they're doing it for the wrong reason. Yeah, exactly. Right. Just like them exactly. men in Matthew, they said, hey, we cast out demons, we prophesied, we've done all these many works. You know, right. you can look at that at all different ways. Right, because we could be right here and we could be doing it for a show just to be here. Right, <laughs> yeah. right, right. Even though we're here. Right, you yeah. could be. Right. You well, could yeah. be. And you've got people that does that. Yes, yeah. you got people that do that. Exactly. And but I'm talking about now, that you gotta is get all your you gotta get in the spirit. The spirit now, if God, I mean, 
This is my heart desire. It may not be everybody's heart desire to be here. Right. Right. I mean, it, it, their, their heart desire may be gone. Well, out here in the right. Some was uh, talking about Jesus or or home in the bed. But, but how, getting rich. how many people do you think really does that? That relationship with God and relationship with people, based on a feeling. Based on the field. In other words, if you got a pastor and he's pastoring a building, if that building's full, that pastor's happy go lucky. Well, you, you empty that building, yeah. that pastor's down. I'm just as happy as this little bitty building here. And I well, the building. Word of God tells us. Now, is he basing his relationship with them people based on a feel good feeling? If it takes Probably. people to get the feeling, then you got the wrong feeling. Right. And, but the Word of There's God. There's some of them doing it. Yeah, the no, Word of God right. will tell you I mean, anywhere. 90, 99% of yeah, you'll go high. <laughs> and you'll, you'll go high. high yeah, but high. the Word of God tells you anywhere there is two or three gathered, gathered in my, in my name, name, I'll my be name in the name. midst. Okay, you take, like me and Pauline were sitting here studying the Word of God. Jesus is number three. He's number one. But we're number two and three. That's three, isn't it? I mean, so, me, he's right there. Me and my wife could be at home having Bible study. Yeah. And well, Jesus is Chris there. Today, he was in Bible study at home. See, I mean, it don't matter who you're at. I mean, a lot of times people go, like my sister Pauline said, about uh, doing it for a show or a feel-good thing, you know, but... Uh, well, I'll be there. Jeff's going to come now and make me feel good. But I, I feels good because Jeff come. That's a feeling you've talked But see, it, it's yeah. just like when Eddie went for the interview today. God and I was having our time. The Word of God and Jesus was bringing His Word out to me. So there's two. It says two or three. Jesus and I are two, so there you go. Right, right. But but how many people really can you take a look around and say, hey, they're when everything's going the way they want it to go, they're hunky dory. Oh, they're everything's good to go. Right. But when it ain't, blah 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 blah. Right. Or when it ain't, they're mad. When it ain't, they're kicking. When it ain't, they're stomping. But when it is, hey, it's go lucky time. But now, 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 are there anything wrong with that? Let's ask, I'm going to ask that. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. Now, explain to me what's wrong with it. What you think's wrong with it. Because they're not, they don't have, and I'm just going to be totally blunt. They're, they don't have the true love of God because they're out for number or they're out for the, I'm just going to say number. They're out for that big crowd. But, do they love God? Does that make any sense? <laughs> Makes some sense. So are they so, out for the number? So when we, when or we, are they out for God? When we step back right now, and we ask, everybody asks themselves, me included, everybody included, everybody in the chat room, everybody that can hear this, is, <clears throat> is your relationship with God based on feelings? <coughs> or are you truly... <clears throat> Going to let God's will be done in your life. That was a decision that everybody has to make, right? Each everybody man has, to, work has out to, his to own make soul salvation, right. right? The Word of God says that. So every man, woman, boy, or girl has to work out their own soul salvation, and if they're if they're playing with God, uh oh. But if we if we if we know this, you know, and we're grabbing God's word and we see, well, we can't we can't base our relationship on God with just a feel good feeling, because it's not going to feel good. More, it, I'm I'm going to tell you, based on my experience, it, it's it's going to feel worse in in the in the fleshly side of the feel good feelings. It's going to feel worse more than it feels good. It has for me. Did in the that word, area? Did the word of God promise us a bed of roses? <laughs> no. No, no, there is many, many, back. many thorns among among those roses. Chris, you gotta go back, and that—that's when you gotta deny yourself. 
Now, now, Pastor, now we're getting into something, ain't we? Now, you, now if we really deny ourselves and really die daily, yeah. like the Word said to do. Truthfully die daily. Truthfully. Truthfully. Truth. With yeah. a, what we say, you got to, to get that true walk with God, you got to have a what? You got to have a made up mind. A true heart. True yeah. Heart. But you can't have that true heart without the desire to walk with God. You can't have that true heart unless you be born again. Right. Born. <laughs> and if you ain't got, if you haven't got God, you ain't going to have that true heart. And you're not going to have that desire to walk with God. Now, 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 let's get into this. And I like to get into it, but I don't want people to kill me. So, you know, but I hope nobody, you know, in the chat room gets super mad. I hope nobody gets mad. It ain't my intent. But let's get into that. How many people do you think out there in the world that thinks they've been born again that ain't that really ain't been born again? A whole lot of them. A bunch. Probably about 99%. We'll go, we'll go 99% uh, again. Uh, yeah. Probably a pretty high number. Hey, it'd be high you... Number. I'm going to go back to your message Sunday night. There's your fruit. Right? Is that... Well, it, it, it definitely comes back to the fruit, you know, and uh, knowing that the fruits are not the works. And, and listen, it even goes a little bit deeper than that because Christ said what? He said it rains on the just. And the unjust. And the unjust. Now, what's that mean? That means no matter who does the work, God said this would take place. You know, it don't matter. Now, you, a, a man that that ain't serving God can go out here and put his money, take care of his money, and it's going to multiply. It's going to multiply. Mm -hmm. He can go out here and do what this Word of God says to do, and what the Word of God says will happen will happen. It rains on the just and the unjust. Now, when a man goes out here and does works, guess what? The fruits of them works are going to happen. Mm -hmm. It don't matter if, you, if, if you're serving God or not serving God. You go out here and till a garden, and you plant a garden, it's going to grow. Correct? That's a fact. <laughs> Correct? Right. It's going to grow. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to grow. So, paying attention to what the fruits are. Not the works. Not the fruit of the works. But the fruit of the individual. Mm -hmm. That's their life. Exactly. How do they behave themselves? How do they conduct themselves? How do they react in situations? These are, these are our fruits. These are our fruits. Wouldn't that be the discerning of the spirit also? Well, I mean that definitely. That's a that's a whole that's a gift, you know. Uh, that gets into a little deeper. Uh, with that, you can tell. With the discerning of the Spirit. Now, you tell me if I'm wrong. With the discerning of the Spirit, you can tell if someone is truly walking. Well, I with tell God. You, the spirits are going to bear witness. Oh, yeah. Right. That's, that's the, the spirits discerning. spirits are going to bear witness. Now, spirit of discernment goes a little deeper oh, yeah. uh, than that, uh, which I really don't... That's going to take a lot of time to get into, but, but it, is, it is a little different. Uh, but the spirits will bear witness. One yeah. with another. Uh, you know, but her fruits, her fruits that come off of her life, they come from her life. It keeps going back to the men in Matthew. When they said, Lord, we've done all this in your name. We've prophesied. We've cast out devils. We've done all these works. But yet he said, I never knew you. Depart from me. Now, how could they have casted out devils? And how could they have done many miracles? But yet Christ didn't know them. Huh. I'll let somebody else answer that one. The, the answer is don't be deceived by works. Right. Don't be deceived by works. Christ said you'll know a tree by the fruit it bears. Now a tree is a person. He's talking about a person. You'll know that person by the fruit he bears. That's how you're going to know him. Pay attention to that. Yeah, That's fruit, how you're going to know him. The fruit, it, the fruit of the spirits. Peace, joy, love, amen. kindness, right. long amen. suffering. Long suffering, gentleness. Yeah. Not they don't get angry, puffed up. All that's of the flesh. All that's of the flesh. So pay attention to the fruit. Now I'm not saying that man ain't gonna mess up, and you'll know the difference. Oh yeah. You'll know the difference. Oh yeah. But guess what? When that mess up becomes into routine and it happens every time, over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Something happens. Something wrong. wrong. Yeah. Something, something wrong. Happened. Oh yeah. Something wrong. <laughs> but you know that's that's where we get back to. To, to get in that, that true walk with God, we must have a, a true heart for God. 
We must have a true heart for God. <laughs> and a true heart for God wants to serve God. Right. And if you really want to serve God, <coughs> you don't really want to grow with God. You don't want to do the things that displease God. You want to try to do your best to do the things that are pleasing to God. But it comes with a cost. What are you talking about, Jeff? He ain't He's trying not to think. But it comes with a cost. <coughs> But, is good for the <clears throat> I mean. but you know how many? But honestly, how many people are in trouble with all this? I mean, picture. Look at this. Look around. Look at the churches. Look around. Look Don't around and, and think. You know, my God, we've got to get the true, the one and only, true living God. You just got to stop it. Of the Bible, we have got to get Him spread across this lost and dying world. Jeff's yeah, got something to say. Holler it. Go ahead. Don't you think the old people live around, but? Uh, Trying to prove to people they're living right. I think that they're whole, doing wrong. I think that what now? Don't you think though when people go to like say go to that altar there to get saved, and then they get up and they go out here and drink a beer, whiskey, whatever they want to do? Right. Don't you think they know they're living wrong? But they're going to put a front on in front of these people to come to church next Sunday and put a front on. Yeah, yeah, they ain't done nothing wrong. There's a whole lot of people does it. That is yeah. where that's called a hypocrite. Yeah, and that okay, is that's called a hypocrite. Okay, you said gonna go. People get saved, and you know they. Why was you said it? <laughs> he said so much. I don't know. You must be born again. Yeah, but don't you know that they ain't born again, and they know they ain't born again when they do that? I'm sure they know. I'm sure every man knows for himself. That's where the Word of God but, says but every man time, works at the own soul. Over time, so. they believe their own lie. Yeah. They convince themselves that they really are okay. And it's they different. believe that. Uh, that's different. It is. It is. But how many people do we, you know, can you imagine that's believed that own lie? They, yeah. They've convinced themselves that they can do whatever, whenever, don't matter, and they're saved and they're going to heaven. And they convince themselves of that. And, and and I can tell you right now, I've met a few. Personally, in my life, I've met a few. And you can almost not change their mind. They are so convinced of it, they will die with it. They will die with it. Now, that's how much of a hold it grabs a hold of people. If, I can tell you back for me, before I got actually right with God at my single wide trailer, I would have died in that state. I would I would have I would have protected what I thought was right, which was wrong. Yeah. It was wrong. But I had myself convinced that it was right. And I would have died in that. And thank God I didn't. Thank God he shook my foundations and let me see the truth. And because I would have died protecting what I thought was right, that I had convinced myself was right, and everybody else could go fly a kite because I was right in my mind. And I would have died. I would have died doing that. I would have died believing that. If God hadn't have came and showed me and touched me, and I would have died. And, and that's how people are. And that's why it's so hard to get them. It's so hard to get them. You got to be stayed prayed up, fasted up, read up. You got. It's hard to get in there and get them because it's been years on years that they've been doing this, and they're so convinced of it. And 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 in some cases, their moms, their dads, their grandpas even done it. It got passed down. Yeah, it got passed down and passed down and passed down. Now, how many people do you think they're deceiving, thinking they're right? They're trying to get people to come to them. Hey, we're right. Come on, come and get saved, you know. And and people are believing it. People are believing it. Yeah. Well, see, the Word of God talked about where Jesus turned the water into wine. Okay, how many people at that wedding where Jesus turned the water into wine, how many people... Do you think now we're just we're just assuming here how many of them do you think got drunk on that wine? I don't know. Now let's turn it around and the word of God says drink wine for the stomach, am drink, I right? Yeah, drink drink a little wine daddy, for your stomach, say for your belly. Notice it said a little. Right. It didn't say gold yet. Right. 
And the people out here today, they take they that verse, yeah. they take that verse, mm -hmm. and they turn it to suit their suit their self. Well, and they get drunk, not a little, but they take this wine and they turn maybe the whole bottle. Maybe two bottles. Well, you can go. You can go with drinking. You can go with lying. You can go with being a thief. You can go with uh, every bit of. Either <laughs> one of them sins that you just said is no bigger than the other. No, and but, and they all convince themselves the same way. But right. The same thing with wine or liquor, or whatever they're drinking. You know where the Bible says to not be in a drunken state of mind. That don't necessarily mean with alcohol. Right. That can be with Nyquil. Right. You can get high on NyQuil if you, oh, if you yeah. drink so much of it. Or you can't a pain pill. Right. Well, you know, it's it's also talking about not be drunken with the things of the world. Uh, in other words, putting things before Christ, uh, being drunk with uh, the ways of the world. Uh, of course, that's getting spiritually now. It's getting out of the corner of mind and we're getting back into that spirit. Uh, it's talking about, you know, not placing things before God. Don't be drunken with the ways of the world. Don't be drunken by them. Right. Don't be drunken by them. See, people thought they was drunk when the Holy Ghost came down upon them, didn't they? They thought they was on that strong drink, Pastor, because they was acting crazy. Look at them, speaking with new tongues, different tongues. They thought they was drunk, sure as the world. They've been drinking that wine. They done got on the strong stuff, and they done got drunk. They was drunk in the Spirit. Drunk in the Spirit of God. Amen? But don't get drunken by the things of the world. Don't let these things of the world pollute your relationships. With God. Because that's exactly what the devil does. That's exactly what happens. For right. long, oh, your job pollutes your relationship. Well, I can't do as much. I can't go nowhere. Well, right. now i got to have money. I done went in debt for my house. i got to pay my house. i got to get this car. i got to make my insurance payment. People, I've got to live. What am I going to do? I'll tell you what you need to do. God said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And he had all these other things unto you. But no, right. you, you've done like David. People do like David does. And they take it upon themselves. When David took it upon himself to get Bathsheba. And the Lord sent Nathan to tell David. He said, I gave you all of this. And if it wasn't enough, all you had to do was ask me. And I would have gave you more. But you didn't ask. You took it upon yourself to do it. And you done it in secret. And now I'm going to reward you openly. Right. It ain't a good reward. Right. So seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And he'll add all these things unto you. But man likes to take it backwards. Man likes to do it for himself. And then God comes second. And God's a jealous God. He we says, have put no other gods before me. That, if you do, I'm trying to use something I'm trying to word this in a way that I don't want to sound mean. <laughs> but if you're doing something out here, okay, I'll use myself for instance. If God wants me to do this, and I put myself in a position instead of doing what God says and I go do something else, I'm putting that, that's my God. Because I didn't listen to God. Now am I right? Or am I wrong? That's putting something before God. Well, I definitely believe, you know, if we put something in front of God, if we place it in front of God, that is our God. Does that not become your God? If you put it before the Father, yeah. I mean, if it means more to you than God Himself does, does that not become your God? Huh. So now we get back to the question, Vicky. Now we get back to the to the question. Is are we letting God's will be done in our life, or are we concerned about what we want? We better be concerned about what God wants. 
Amen. Because when God says move, even if it don't make sense, right? Even if you got to quit your job, but, even if you got to give your house away and, and go out there and live off the street for six months, even if I'm not saying you have to, but I'm saying you might. Somebody might have to. I've known right. people that's had to give their stuff away, and they say God told them to give it away. I've known people that's had to do that. <laughs> I've heard right. te- I've heard testimonies. I've heard testimonies of people that said that God told them to give away their house. And they gave it away. They gave it away. Uh, now, that, now that's what we get to is, are we willing to let God's will be done in our life, or are we placing things in front of it? Well, we, we better be putting God's purse no matter what. I mean, if God, God says... That he'll he'll use the foolish things to confound the wise. Am I right? Amen. It won't it won't make no sense. It won't make no sense to the flesh. But spiritually, it will. In other words, if I <coughs> in the flesh, if I know the man and he said, "Well, God told me to give away my house," and I say, "Brother, you ain't got no house." You're going to be sleeping in the, in the ditch out there if you give that thing away. Now, that don't, in the flesh, that don't make sense. Right. Now, why would you give that thing away if you ain't got nothing else to sleep in? I mean, why are you going to give it away? But that don't matter. God told you to give it away. If God it away. tells you to do it, you better do it regardless. Just like Christ, he said what? He said, if at all possible, let this cup pass us from you. Right. But nevertheless, not my will be done. But thou will be done. Thou will be done. Right. That's right. That's strength. So that's where that's what we need to be saying. Not our will be done, but thou will be done. Now, how do we get there to where we can say that? We've got to really die daily. What Pastor was talking about earlier. Yeah. We're talking about really dying. We're talking about mumbling some words out of your mouth. We have to decrease ourselves where God can increase. But when you get back to it, God wants you best, don't He? Yep. He wants you best. And He wants, in order to worship God, you got to worship God in spirit and in truth. Mm-hmm. You can't do it in the flesh. You can't do it in the corner of mind. got to be in spirit and in truth. But, you know, in order to get to that true walk with God, you must be born again or you can't get there to begin with. That's for sure. If you've not been born again, then Christ don't live in your heart. You sure can't have. <laughs> you sure ain't gonna get there on your own. You know what I'm saying? We can't do it. Uh, this old flesh just ain't gonna do it. That's just okay. one thing. But when we learn that when we really die, when we learn how to really die, and I mean really die, is when you can get to that place where Christ was <clears throat> when He said, "God, Your will be done." Right. Not mine. I know I've got to die. I know these things are gonna happen. And I don't want to. But nevertheless, I'm going to let your will be done, not mine. I've got to go through his pain. And serve. You think he didn't hurt? You think that didn't hurt? That hurt. You think he didn't feel that pain? He felt that pain. Mm-hmm. But nevertheless, God, your will be done, not mine. Right. Your will be done, not mine. Right. Now, this is where Paul says we got some suffering to do. And I reckon the same suffering that we go through... It's the same suffering that he went through. You think, so many people, see, so many people, they, they do his prosperity thing. See, uh, oh, you can have the best of this. God wants you to have, you know, the best house, the best car, the best money, the best everything. The best everything. God wants you to have the best of it all. The best of all the worldly possessions. Of the worldly possessions. Let me tell you something. These worldly possessions are going to burn. Well, if it's God's money. Lay, it's going to burn. Lay your treasures... Up in heaven. Who's the who's, not on earth? Who's the who's the the God of of the the earth? In other words, Slewfoot. Who? Slewfoot. Huh? What did he tell Christ when he when he tempted him for forty days and forty nights? He said, "If you'll bow down and worship me, I'll give you all you can see right here." Now, how could he? How could he give him that? He couldn't. How could but, he give him that? He couldn't give him that because it already belonged to Jesus. How could he give him that? Oh yes. Yeah. You better believe he 
He, he can set a brand new car in your driveway. Say? So? If you'll sell out to you. Yeah. You'll fill your money with pockets. If you'll sell out to you. Pockets of money. And fill your pockets. Well, whatever. But you, you think that's not true? Hey, sell out to this world and see if you can't have what you want. Yeah. Go sell out to it. The reason... No, but I highly re dis recommend it because you're selling your soul. The <laughs> reason the people... Hey, man, you're selling your soul. The reason people have so much that's living in sin is because it's all worldly things. You know, you know, you know what I consider to be blessed from God is? What I call a blessing from God? A blessing from God is when I'm content where I am. That's what the Word says. <laughs> There's so many people that think blessings of God is worldly possessions. They've missed it. No. They when missed you're truly it blessed from thought. God, you're content no matter where you're at. When you're you are content in this little trailer, you can tend in the ditch line, you can dent at somebody else's house, you're content. Why? Because your relationship with God is not based on feelings, and it's a real relationship. Because you know God's going to take care of you no matter where you are. Amen. You're content. That's when you're blessed. My God, when you say it don't matter what takes place. It don't matter if everybody leaves me standing here by myself. It don't matter if I'm laying in that ditch line. God, your will be done, and I'm going to be content. I'm going to be content with what you gave me. That's when you can say, my God, I'm blessed. Look at that. Oh. That's a blessed man that can do that. That's a blessed man that can say, you know, hey, I'm, I'm not going to whine and growl and complain and go out here and water and kick and stomp like a little child because I don't have this. But people get that so confused. They do. They think the blessings from God is worldly gain. To be blessed from God is to be content with what you have. That's when you're blessed. Hey, I'm at peace. I can lay my head down at night and I can go to sleep without a worry in the world. Now that's blessed, ain't it, brother? Ain't that blessed? Amen. When I can just lay down and I have no... I don't have to worry about somebody stabbing me, killing me, raping me. I don't have to worry about these things. I got <laughs> peace in mind and I'm content with where I'm at and I'm content with God and I'm that's supersonic blessed. Supersonic blessed. You can have all these worldly things. <laughs> you can be content anywhere you are if you know without a shadow of a doubt that God's going to take care of you. But Amen. you have to know that. Right? Amen. It has to be in here. Not just something. Here. Amen. Not just something that, that you've heard. Right. See, a lot of people do that. See, they knew God. But they glorified not. They glorified Him not as God. They knew Him as God, but they, they didn't give Him glory as God. Right. So many people do that. I know Him as God. I know He can do this. I know He can do that. How do you know that? So many people know that because they've heard somebody else say it. Mm -hmm. It's been passed down. They heard their mommy and daddy say it. Oh, God can do this. God can do that. But do they really believe it? Have they been born again? Have they been sanctified by the power of God? Can you stand there knowing without a shadow of a doubt that I'm bought and paid for and it don't matter what happens. It don't matter what happens because the devil can't pluck me out of my father's hand. We have to know that. Yes, ma'am. Well, let me tell you something. One very important thing. One very important thing. What did Jesus know? He knew what he had to do. Yeah. Uh, from the <coughs> time that he was conceived, he knew what he had to do. Until huh. he, it happened. So ask your question. Ask yourselves that. Do you know, without a shadow of a doubt, what you're supposed to be doing for God? Now, now, because when you do, you can't be shook. You right. see that? When you do, you can't be shook. Christ, even his disciples come to him, and they said Christ was out praying. Listen, before when he got up early, before the sun came up, he went out praying by himself. Here come his disciples looking for him. Hey, oh, where you at? Where you at? They said, come back here. You know, I can picture that. And they said, you know, come back and cast the devils out and do all this. Why? Because it felt good. The popularity, the feel-good sensation. Hey, this felt good. It's bringing attention. Everybody's going crazy. You see what I'm saying? Look what this man's doing. And Christ said, look. He said, I must go into other cities and preach the gospel too. For that's why I've been sent. But already the ones closest to him, the disciples, 
was trying to draw him back over here. Right. Without them even knowing it, I'm sure. They was trying to draw him away from what he was really sent to be doing. But Christ knew what he was supposed to do. And he wavered not. <coughs> right. And he wavered not. So, with that being said, if we don't really know without a shadow of a doubt, you get down and you fast and you pray and you seek the face of God until you find out what you're supposed to be doing. And once you know without a shadow of a doubt what you're supposed to be doing, you won't be moved. Amen. You won't right. be moved. Amen. Brother Chris, why, why it's on my mind, um, Brother Willie called and uh, said that he needed prayer tonight. Uh, he called me. He was on his way to work, and he said he needs prayer tonight. Him and his wife both does. Amen. Amen, amen. All right, guys. So know that we definitely want to be trying to have that true walk with God. We want to do all that we can do to get true with God and have that true heart and know without a shadow of a doubt that we can be content no matter where we're at or what we're going through and not be mummers and complainers and to give God the glory for all things because He truly deserves it. And, uh, you know, and we know that we must be born again. You know, uh, so... Definitely, definitely, let's make sure that we're trying to get, we're doing our, our utmost best to get that true walk with God and not getting caught up with this false religion, this man-made doctrine, uh, getting your feel-good on. <clears throat> In other words, basing your relationship with God on a feeling. God's way more than a feeling. And don't be fooled by that. Amen. Amen. Well, I think that's going to about wrap the class up. Don't Amen. forget about uh, the service uh, Friday night. Don't forget about uh, the service Saturday Yeah, night. we got the disciple class coming up Friday that Pastor Eddie Garrett gets to teach. Amen. We all excited to see that take place. Yeah. So show up in the chat room and, 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 and help us. Amen. Help us. And uh, but we got that Friday nights, and we got the nursing home on Saturdays. The faith walk, no, the nursing homes uh, once a month. I'm sorry, uh, but we got the faith walk every Saturday morning. They do the faith walk, and uh, so remember them in prayer on that, and uh, remember us in prayer as Saving America once so at a time steps out, and uh, Amen steps out into that dark, being the bright light, and that light is Jesus Christ. Amen. Steps out in showing the world Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what we need to be doing. And uh, we're truly out of time on that. So that's what we all need to be doing. All you in the chat room, everybody, let's let our light shine bright, that light of Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't hide it. Don't put it under a bushel. Let it shine bright for the world to see. Amen. Let it shine bright. Remember the lady that we went and uh, prayed with today. Um, yeah. Uh, what was her name? Kay, uh, Cassidy. Cassidy. Kay Cassidy. Kay Cassidy. Kay Cassidy. Amen. Remember her. We went and uh, prayed with her today. Amen. Met her on trying to get some things done there for her house. So remember all that in prayer. Amen. And Barbara Taylor, she had a stroke. <clears throat> and uh, Bar had it Barbara two weeks Taylor ago when they just had a stroke. Nice amen. So all you guys in the chat room, anybody listening, amen. Please lift up her Don't name and the family's name in prayer. Amen. Take that before God. Uh, and what was that lady's name? Sandra Sloan? Sandra Sloan. And her family. Amen. Irvin Taylor and his family. Irvin Taylor and his family. And, uh, Bobby Bohannon. Yeah. Amen. Uh, Terry, his wife. Amen. Really, really uh, the list goes on and on. My God, you Remember know. Remember Brother Joe. Joe. Uh, Joe Wallace. No, well, him too. Joe Merle. Yeah, he's been sick. Amen. We always need to keep each other lifted, uplifted in prayer. Amen. Uh, oh, we've got a lot right here that haven't been called. Now. But definitely know that, definitely oh, know wow. what was her name? That we do she not want to be called up. We do not want to be called up in that in the false religion, the man-made religion. We want to have a true relationship with Jesus Christ. We want to have that true relationship, and it don't need to be based on feelings. Amen. It don't need to be based on feelings. It needs to be based on God. Your will be done in my life. In my life, whatever the cost is, whatever the consequence is, God, let your will be done in my life. Amen. Amen. Know that we love you. And know that we're praying for you. And we always ask that you guys pray for us. Amen. 
we always ask that you guys pray for us. So I'm, I'm going to play this clip right here. It's a little video about the Sermon on the Mount, about the treasures in heaven. Amen. So as you give us a listen, uh, please listen to it. Amen. Listen to it. And as it ends, we're going to end the program. Amen. So know that we love you and know that we're praying for you. And always, please, always keep us in your prayers. Amen. Well, it's not going to play, so I'm going to pop over here and play a few testimonies. So give these a listen and be blessed. Amen. Hello, this is Brother Boyd Martin in Idaho. We love you all. We're praying for you. God bless you. I wanted to call in and really talk about the true Jesus in the Bible. See, so many people go to church on Sundays and believe that Jesus is just lukewarm. We 16, you believe in Jesus and you go to heaven no matter what you do in life. And sin doesn't matter. I have friends that are homosexuals that preach the word of God, say they're saved. Friends that are Christian leaders that preach the word of God who are into pornography and horrible sins like that and never get the sins out and they say that they're going to heaven. But the true Jesus in the Bible said it's a straight, narrow road and very few will find the way there to heaven. Most people are going to be living in sin and not truly... Uh, following what Jesus says to do, not really holding to his teachings. And Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, many are going to say, Lord, Lord, I've gone to church, and he's going to look right at them and cast them out and call them workers of iniquity and say that he never knew them. So you've got millions and millions of people going to denominational churches that won't do the will of God, and they're going to be sent right to hell, even though they think that they're going to heaven. We've got to get some fire in our hearts and lives to live for Jesus and do what Jesus says to do. Jesus says, repent or perish. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it out. If your right hand eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. For it's better to the inner life maimed than to go into hell. We've got to preach against sin. We've got to be watchmen and warn the world against sin. Then they're going to hate us for us. People kill people. Many righteous men in the Bible have been killed because they preach against sin. We've got to preach against sin and call sin sin and get it out of people's lives. When Ephesians chapter 5 says there shouldn't be a hint of, hint of impurity or any sins like that, fornication shouldn't be named among the saints. It means what it says. And we have to have sin out of our life if we're going to go where Jesus is. Jesus said, let the dead bury their own dead. Does someone want to bury his father? You go and proclaim the kingdom of God. People go to church on Sundays, but they don't go out and make disciples of all nations. Teach them how to obey everything and baptize them daily in people's lives. We've got to be out there doing that, doing the will of God for Matthew chapter 7 if we want to be welcomed into heaven and not called workers of iniquity and cast out. There's a whole group of religious people that say, Lord, Lord, that aren't going to make it because they aren't doing the will of God. They won't we'll make disciples. They won't pray for people. They won't hope orphans or needy, needy people. They can care less. They believe about the Gospels all about what God can do for you and building up your possessions and having nice things. They don't deny themselves, take up their cross, or lose their life for Jesus and the Gospel from Luke 9, 23 to 26. That's the Jesus who we follow. He rebuked the whole church for being lukewarm and for crying acquiring wealth. The church of Laosia and wanted to vomit them out of his mouth. And so many people today are acquiring wealth, wealth and nice things, but they're not denying themselves for the poor or to preach the word or to preach against sin or really living for Jesus. So let's get some fire in our hearts and lives to go make disciples and teach people how to obey everything, to help those needy people, to share testimonies, to pray for people, to do the will of God so we can be welcomed into heaven and not called workers of iniquity and cast out. Let the dead bury your own, their own dead. You go and proclaim the kingdom of God, Jesus says. God bless you all. Have a good day. Amen. Hey, this is Evangelist Chris Cheney with Saving America One So at a Time. Amen. Just wanted to call and say... Everybody needs to get up, get out, and get busy, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen. We ain't got time to sit around, mumble, complain, be worried about this, worry about that. Forget all that and get Jesus Christ on your mind and get him in your heart and get ramped up and don't be caught being lukewarm because he'll spew you out of his mouth, he said. Amen. So let's get up, get out, and let's get on fire for God. Amen. Love y'all.